Hi there, I'm Larry Tombaugh from Streeter, Illinois, and today we're talking about some of my experiences with uh, strip-till and no-till. Uh, my first attempt at no-till was kind of a, a good laugher for the neighbors in 1973. We were kind of ahead of our time, and uh, it didn't turn out all that well, but uh, give it 20 years or so, and I got back into it. Uh, we started strip-tilling in 1994, and we've had cover crops uh, off and on the last 15 years, and now consistently. A big part of that is the planter, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about today. Uh, it's really important when we're doing a lot of the, the things that we are doing, quit tillage pretty much. Uh, we had some vertical tillage, uh, really like the strips early on. We didn't have a horsepower tractor big enough, so we always had uh, neighbors put it on and we used dry fertilizer and anhydrous. As we've kind of grown toward more of a nutrient management uh, consideration. We've gotten away from the dry fertilizer and we don't use anhydrous anymore. Uh, anhydrous kills my worms and the, uh, the microbes really don't like that much salt with the dry fertilizer. The dry fertilizer we use now is actually pretty much salt free and we can mix it in liquid so it's soluble and put it in the row. Uh, but we've had really good results uh, with no-till on beans and strip till and we've really actually uh, gotten away from some of the uh, the tillage that we were doing with some of the vertical tillage. We used an airway for a long time. We've used uh, Great Plains um, vertical till machine and I guess I'm kind of uh, relating to what Ray Archuleta says that any tillage is destructive and since we've gone to more of the biological stuff we're trying to get away from any tillage especially uh, in the corn stalks. So in our holistic approach to what we're doing on the farm, we try and get the corn off early at 25, 26%. Then we have a neighbor with a three point spreader come in and spread uh, cereal rye on corn stalks and then he rolls it. And then we get our uh, residue digester on. We're a firm believer in that. When you've got corn with a 65 to, to one ratio of carbon nitrogen, you need to have more nitrogen or the bugs are going to have to steal it from someplace. So you need to add that. So in our re residue digester, we put the compost tea separately from um, about five gallons of 28, a gallon of humic, a pound of sugar and water to get uh, enough moisture to flow it. We try to get that on as quickly as possible. Um, in some of our testing, we actually renamed our farm Larry and Tombaugh, Larry Tombaugh Experimental Farms. It used to be we made a lot of mistakes and now it's just one more experiment. So it's not a big deal. But uh, we like to uh, get the residue digester on as quickly as we can while the stalks are still sappy and capture some of that sugar to get the microbes uh, working with that extra, extra energy to, to use there. Uh, we're going to be looking at this planter and uh, if you can say one thing, John Deere has built great planters and to their detriment, they don't trade them in. This is a 1994-7200 that's got almost uh, all the same kind of attributes that the new planters have. Uh, so we've actually retrofitted this with a lot of things. We're, uh, we're using uh, spike wheels, but we've modified the spike wheels. They were Dawn spike wheels. And with our really soft soils, we were getting too aggressive. So we cut them down to about an inch and three quarters, put a half inch rebar around it and uh, use that as a treader wheel. So we got spikes on one side, rubber wheels on the other side. Um, we've got the Yetter two by two by two. Randy Dowdy cost me a lot of money a few years ago. I had two by uh, fertilization. He said, no, no, you gotta have two by two so it's even side and so the roots are all formed evenly. So we went to that. Um, just this year, we tricked out this planter even further than where we had been. We put uh, e uh, V-sets in instead of E-sets, and then we put row flow electric motors on not only our um, seed chambers, which we got new seed boxes. These si seed boxes will actually allow us in the future, if we want to put the divider in and have multiple hybrids, we can do that. Um, and then we also put electric uh, clutches in the insecticide boxes. We haven't used insecticide for a number of years now, but we do put dry humates in, and we've found a real advantage putting 10 to 15 pounds of uh, a medium grained uh, dry humate right in the row. That expenditure of about $5 an acre has been returning about $40 or $45 an acre, so it's a no brainer for us. Um, some of the things you can't really see, obviously, from this distance, so trust me, I won't even turn to point to them, but we've got reduced diameter uh, press wheels on. We think that's an advantage. 
We've got TSP serrated colders on, uh, which we think is an advantage. We've had clean sweep for a long time, um, and we had um, Air Force, but this year we put on Delta Force. I think, in my estimation, Delta Force was one of the, the best things we could do. Uh, that combined with RTK, because uh, we're going over a lot of different soils. We A couple years ago, three years ago, we tiled all of my ground that I own, and uh, you know, we're going some places we've got strips in, but last year we didn't get all the strips in because it was such a wet fall. And then obviously this spring was uh, was a real challenge with, uh, we planted some uh, some beans the middle of May, but that was the first we got in. I was, it was really fully a month later than I had hoped to get into. So uh, we're using totally tubular in the robe and Keaton seed firmers behind. And uh, the cocktail that we put in the row it's got about 10 different products in it. Uh, we're putting the compost tea in, or we're putting uh, a seaweed, concentrated seawater, a seaweed product, uh, sugar, uh, some fulvic acid. We're really big on humic and fulvic acid and uh, some other proprietary products that we have. And it's been my, my feeling all along since I started with strip till that I didn't really like bulk spreading. I thought it was uneven. And if I can put the nutrients in a concentrated amount, it wouldn't take as many as I would have to spread uh, bulk. And I would get it right there where the plant could use it. So the whole idea is getting it right there. Uh, we use a uh, dry soluble fertilizer in the row. So it's, it's right there. Uh, the plants, when they grow, corn especially, you know, at V5 is when it decides just what yield it's going to shoot for. And if it's got all the nutrients there, it's looking around in this cold soil and say, hey, I'm in the land of milk and honey. I, I'm going to go for 600 bushels. And that's what we're hoping it says. I haven't talked to any at that stage, but I'm hoping that's what they're thinking. And then the two by two, we put uh, about 18 gallons of 28, a gallon of humic, uh, two gallons of ammonium thiosulfate to get a little more sulfur in the row. And... Uh, we really believe in having a little bit of a charge of nitrogen early. I don't want it in the row. Uh, I definitely don't want to have 32% uh, because that'll kill uh, my microbes. And I don't want 1034O because that'll kill my microbes. And, uh, you know, we're really big believers in trying to protect the biology that's in the soil. With this compost tea that we make, we've got over 4,000. It's been DNA tested. We've got over 4,000 colony forming fungal units. And they live together, they're compatible. If I get products from other companies, I'm not sure that they're gonna be the Hatfield and McCoys and, and fighting each other. So we try and keep it that way. Um, the clean sweep, of course, is good. We've uh, set up the tanks so that we use the two center tanks to, to go to each row. And this year we put V-Apply Flex pumps on each one. So I've got it on the, on the 2020 monitor in the cab, the precision planning system. I can tell exactly what each row is doing. Uh, we can do prescriptions and variable rate it. We can variable rate the, uh, the seed population, and uh, that works out pretty well. I went a little cheaper on my 2x2x2. Two by two by two. We put one Viaplex for four different units, and uh, then I'd have to have or or three units, I'm sorry. And so we put orifices in there to hold the pressure. Um, but then I cheat, and I take the Viaply off and put it on my spike wheel that we made, and... Uh, then I can have exactly the right amounts or variable rate my side dress nitrogen, which nitrogen, again, is going to have the same formula, 28% uh, nitrogen, a couple gallons of methylthiosol, and the humic. And we're firm believers that the humic will put a carbon bond around the nitrogen and stabilize it for a while. But these days, you can put a lot of um, add-ons to your planter and make it just, uh, you know, a really... Uh, really hard working machine. If you only have one chance to plant, why well, this makes your, your options a lot better. We, can, we take the same kind of uh, notion with our sprayer. We bought a, an old Hardy sprayer, Hagee, I'm sorry, Hagee sprayer. I still have a Hardy, but the, the, the Hagee replaced it. And it's a 1995. I didn't pay a lot of money for it. And I spent twice that much that I bought it for putting upgrades in so that I've got capstan pinpoint and auto steer and uh, it really has made a big difference because we do a lot of foliar feeding. We believe in foliar feeding. And to do that correctly, you're going to be doing a lot of it after dark. And you need to have uh, control of everything you're doing. 
Precision pays. I'm, I'm a firm believer that precision pays. The auto steer was a no-brainer. Uh, being able to plant right on top of the strips, not having, because we're mostly flat black. We've got cr uh, creeks through uh, all three of the farms. But being able to put that seed right exactly where we've got no nutrients, uh, right in the tilth, and uh, yeah, it's a good thing.